Welcome back. In the previous sessions, we have discussed about Mendel's three laws based on the monohybrid cross and dihybrid cross. We also have discussed aberrations from the law in the form of incomplete dominance and co-dominance. Now, Mendel published his work on the garden bee in the year 1865, but largely his work went either unnoticed or scientists of his time did not agree with his findings. Some of the reasons why Mendel's work could not reach the larger mass. One was because number one, communication was not easy during those times in the 18th, 19th century as it is now. So to publish a work it was very difficult. Second reason was that Mendel used statistics and mathematical logic to explain a biological phenomenon which was for the first time. So people did not find it either interesting or did not agree with that idea. So that is another reason. Number three, Mendel's idea that traits are controlled by a pair of factors and these factors are discrete meaning during the gamut formation the factors they don't combine they don't merge but they are passed on as independent discrete units was difficult to believe during those times and he also says that during this time the chromosomes or the factors they don't blend which was the idea during those times so that was another reason why his work was not accepted and even though Mendel says that traits are controlled by factors he does not explain what are these factors made up of what is the <coughs> Excuse me. What are the factors made up of? What is the composition of these factors? So, due to these four reasons, Mendel's work went unnoticed till 1900. So, for the next 35 years, his work went unnoticed in the books. Then, these three scientists, Carl Corenz, Hugo de Vries, and von Schemack, they carried out their own individual experiments and all three of them individually once again they found that Mendel's work was of great importance and significance in understanding heredity and variation. So 1900 marks the rediscovery of Mendel's work by these three scientists. Not only that, during that time, microscopy had advanced and we had better microscopes. So scientists had now, with the help of microscopes, worked out the process of cell division. What happens during cell division, especially during meiosis? So when a cell divides, what are the different stages? All these things were worked out. And in the year 1900, to Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary, they combined this knowledge of chromosomal movement during meiosis along with Mendel's ideas of inheritance and variation and they proposed what is called as the chromosomal theory of inheritance. It is very very simple. Sutton and Bowery, what did they do? They observed chromosomal movement during meiosis. So, you know that when the cell undergoes meiosis, it produces two cells that are haploid in nature, which contain half the number of chromosomes. And with the help of microscopy, 
the moment of chromosomes was worked out as you have already studied in your first year in cell division lesson in the first meiosis during the prophase stage the chromosomes will undergo recombination event and during the anaphase stage these chromosomes will segregate they will split apart we know that in diploid organisms chromosomes occur in pairs so every chromosome has its own pair and when these undergo meiosis the two cells or two gametes will obtain one of these pairs so this chromosome this gamete or cell will receive this chromosome whereas the other gamete will receive another chromosome so sutton and bowery they drew a parallel between the movement of genes and the movement of chromosomes mendel says that factors will segregate during gamete formation independent of each other so this was parallel to the movement of chromosomes during gamete formation chromosomes also will split apart and they are equally distributed between the gametes so when chromosomes are segregated and distributed to the gametes the factors present on the chromosomes will also get segregated and when the gametes fuse once again the chromosomes will also come together when the chromosomes come together the genes will also come together so there was a parallel between the movement of genes and the movement of chromosomes so this was used by sutton and bowery to explain mendel's idea of inheritance so according to them during cell division when chromosomes separate from each other along with that the factors or the genes present on them will also get separated that is why genes can be separated as discrete units and during fertilization once again they come together which is responsible for inheritance that is the chromosomal theory of inheritance next when the idea of mendel's work spread another group of scientists they also started lot of work on other organisms one such scientist was thomas hunt morgan Thomas Hunt Morgan he chose the organism fruit fly for his work on genetics he was a american evolutionary biologist and a geneticist morgan also was interested in studying inheritance so he chose fruit fly as his model organism the scientific name of fruit fly is drosophila melanogaster now there were few reasons why th morgan chose drosophila for his studies number one these organisms they can be easily grown in laboratories on simple synthetic medium so it is a very inexpensive process to grow them in laboratories so that is why he chose this also they have a very short life cycle the fruit flies they hatch out and within 2 weeks they are ready to produce the next generation so they have very short life cycle which is advantages for studies in genetics and inheritance and single 
mating produces large number of flies large number of fertilized eggs and the sexes the gender male and the female so male and female are easily recognizable usually the female flies are larger and the male flies are smaller so these differences between the male and the female can be easily recognized with the help of a hand lens or a microscope that is what thomas hunt model used he just used a magnifying glass in the initial stages not only this drosophila melanogaster melanogaster it exhibits many variations like our pisum chatterum plant so many variations are observed and to observe these variations a simple low power microscope is sufficient so due to these reasons drosophila melanogaster was chosen by thomas hunt morgan for his studies in genetics this organism drosophila melanogaster is also called as the cinderella of genetics because it is used almost everywhere in genetics now what did thomas hunt morgan do what was the work what did he do he was also interested in studying mendel's laws of inheritance so he also did exactly what mendel did so in one of his experiments thomas hunt morgan he chose a yellow bodied white eyed female so this is a this are variations like we have tallness round wrinkled yellow green color in bison chatterum similarly drosophila melanogaster also shows one of many variations he crossed this with a male which had brown body with red eyes when the results came this were completely different from what mendel observed this is almost similar like a dihybrid cross there are two pairs of characteristics isn't it and the results of the f2 generation were very far from the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 meaning this ratio was not at all seen when this cross was done thomas hunt morgan and his group of students they wondered what could be the possible reason as to why this ratio is not followed one of the reason for this is very simple this ratio is obtained only if there is independent assortment of genes so because this ratio was not obtained in this experiment conducted by t s morgan they knew that the genes did not move independent of each other what could be the reason is what resulted in the beautiful conclusion that we have they knew that the variations for these genes were present on the x chromosome so the gene responsible for this feature was present on the x chromosome this is a sex chromosome that is sex chromosomes are those which are responsible for the gender of the organism either male or female another interesting thing that they observed was when this cross was made the number of parental combinations the percentage of parental combination was 98.7% and 
and non parental combination that is recombinant new combinations coming out of the cross non parental combinations were only 1.3% whereas in mendel's dihybrid cross you see out of the 16 combinations six were new combinations so if you calculate the percentage that is 6 by 16 into 100 that would be this comes to around 38% approximately so 38% new combinations were observed whereas in thomas hunt morgan's experiments the new combinations were only 1.3% why is this this is due to the phenomenon of what is called as linkage this is a very important concept so thomas hunt morgan they found that the reason for such low percentage of new non parental combination or recombinants is because of the linkage of genes so they observed that the gene for yellow body let us say this is that gene yellow body and white eye let us say this so yellow body and white eye these were present on the same chromosome not only that they were present very close to each other the two genes were very close to each other so this is what is called as sex linked genes or the phenomenon is called as linkage so when genes are physically closely associated on a chromosome we call it as linkage even when the group of genes are present on the same chromosome how close they are present together is what matters because in another experiment where hunt norgan they used miniature wings wing flies there the percentage of non parental combination or recombinants was around 32.7% much higher than this based on these two experiments t h morgan and his team they described the phenomenon of linkage so they say that when genes are present very close to each other the recombination frequency is very less recombination frequency is less very poor and further the genes take for example this experiment the result for this high level of new combination is because the two genes were present far from each other so miniature wings and white eyes let us say so the distance between the two genes was very far from each other so even when genes are present on the same chromosome if the genes are far then the percentage of recombination recombination frequency is high you know that in meiosis 1 what happens is during prophase 1 during the packeting stage of prophase the two homologous chromosomes they come together right and they undergo what is called as crossing over isn't it what is crossing over crossing over is a phenomenon when the two homologous chromosomes they exchange segments of dna or segments of genes between them 
So let us say these two chromosomes are exchanging the genes between them. Crossing over is taking place, which will result in recombination. When this crossing over goes, recombination will take place. What is recombination? Recombination is nothing but formation of non-parental combinations. So when crossing over takes place, there is a physical exchange between the chromosomes. So genes from here will cross over to here and genes on this chromosome will cross over here which will result in formation of non-parental combination or recombinants. Now according to the distance between the genes in this case let us say during crossing over the yellow gene and the white eyed gene because they are present very close to each other during the exchange during the crossing over these two genes will move together because they move together the percentage of parental combination is very high whereas in this case of the miniature winged drosophila the distance between the two genes is very far apart because of this when crossing over takes place this gene can move separately whereas this gene can move separately because they are very far apart because of this the percentage of recombination is very high based on the recombination frequency Thomas Hunt Morgan's student whose name is Alfred Sturtevant he proposed what is called as the linkage maps for the first time in 1911 Morgan's student Sturtevant he made the first linkage map what is a linkage map it is nothing but the graphical representation of the arrangement of genes on a chromosome how many genes are present and what is the position of each gene with respect to the other gene so it is a graphical representation of sequential arrangement of genes on a chromosome the closer the two genes are their recombination frequency will be low the farther the two genes are their recombination frequency will be higher meaning they will separate out during crossing over resulting in new combinations that is about the linkage maps done by Alfred Sturtevant and this is the contribution of Thomas Hunt Morgan with the help of Drosophila melanogaster. So they found that when the genes are linked closely the percentage of parental combination is more. When the genes are very far percentage of non-parental combination is very high. Next let us let us talk about sex determination in different organisms. By around the beginning of 19th century a scientist named as Henking he was observing the process of meiosis as well as the process of gametogenesis in some insects and during his observation he found that always there was a 
particular specific structure which was a dark colored body which was seen in all the gametes and when these gametes they underwent fertilization they produced a particular gender and when these colored bodies were absent it resulted in the formation of a particular gender so colored bodies were observed by hanging he called them as x bodies these colored bodies are nothing but chromo somes chromo means color chromo means color somo means body so the presence of specific x bodies or chromosomes they determined whether the organism is a male or a female because of which the sex chromosomes they are named as x chromosomes even now to understand the concept of sex determination let us take the example of human beings so sex determination in human beings is very simple in human beings you already know this there are 46 chromosomes in every cell out of which there are 22 pair called as the auto somes that is 44 chromosomes and the last pair is the x y or x x these are called as the sex chromosomes so these are called as sex chromosomes because these chromosomes they determine whether the baby is a male or a female so in the case of human males the last pair is x y whereas in females the last pair is x x this is a parent male parent and this would be the mother mother will contain x x whereas father will contain x y when they form the gamete that is the sperm 50% of sperms will contain x chromosome whereas 50% of sperms will contain y chromosome whereas in the case of females all the ovum all ovum will contain only x chromosomes so if the sperm containing x chromosome fuses with the egg it will result in a female whereas sperm containing y chromosome if it fuses with the egg it will result in a male so this is a female child whereas this will be a male child so in human beings the mode of sex determination is based on the male the sperm will decide whether the child is male or a female usually during previous years if the mother used to bear female child she was blamed by the family but actually it is not the mother who decides the gender of the child it is the sperm because there are 50% x chromosome carrying sperms and 50% of the sperms will carry y chromosome whereas the female produces same type of chromosomes so the female should not be blamed for the gender of the child so in human beings we can say that sex determination is of x y type which is an example for male heterogametes or heterogamety meaning the male gametes are heterogamous half gametes will contain one type of chromosome that is x half the sperms will contain y type of chromosomes so x 
why type of sex determination is seen in human beings. The same thing is seen in Drosophila also, both in human beings and in Drosophila. Sex determination is of XY type. Males are they are heterogamous. Whereas in the case of certain insects like grasshopper, it is of X0 type. Here males they contain one less chromosome. One chromosome is less. So that is what is zero. Whereas females contain both XX chromosomes. So here also in insects also it is the gender is determined by the male. If the sperm containing X fuses with the female, it will result in a female insect. Whereas if the sperm which does not contain any chromosome, there is no chromosome, if it fuses with the egg, it will result in a male. So this is what is called as X0 type of sex determination that is seen in insects. Males contain one chromosome less, that's why it's called X0. So that is one type of sex determination that is seen. This is also an example for male heterogeneity. Whereas in poultry, that is in chickens, hens, etc. Poultry birds, it is of the type ZW. And this is an example for female heterogamity. So, in the poultry farm, the gender of the chick, when an egg hatches, whether the bird is a male or a female is due to the type of egg it is decided by the female because here females are ZW whereas males are ZZ so there are two types of eggs produced by the females one contains Z chromosome another contains the W chromosome so it is the egg which decides whether the bird is going to be a male or a female. So, this is an example for female heterogamity. Whereas males are of course homogamous, homogametes. All the gametes will contain the same type of chromosome, Z chromosome. Similarly, in human beings, females, they contain homogametes. All gametes will contain only X chromosomes. So, these are the different examples for sex determination in human beings, in Drosophila, in insects, some insects, in poultry birds, which is decided on the female. And we have the case of honey bee. Honey bees are very peculiar. In there is the haplodiploid type of sex determination. Now, this is a very curious case where the queen which is a female and other worker bees these are deployed in nature meaning they have the complete set of 32 chromosomes the queen bee it produces the eggs which are haploid in number through the process of parthenogenesis it forms the sterile male bees which are haploid in nature. So the formation of male honeybees is through the process of parthenogenesis that is development from the egg directly without fertilization. The male honeybees will produce the sperms through the process of mitosis. The sperms will then fuse with the egg and result in the formation of the females that is the queen and the worker bees that are diploid that is why this kind of sex determination is called as the haplodiploid type of 
sex determination where the queen and the worker bees which are females are deployed in nature whereas the male honey bees are developed from unfertilized eggs through the process of parthenogenesis that is all for today